Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Arena The Contest. This is a game for one to eight players. Takes about an hour and a half to maybe three hours to play, depending on the type of game you're gonna play. Because in this game, you're going to be playing with uh, one to eight players. So a solo mode is gonna be there, as well as a PvP style mode. Then there is going to be a story mode, as well as this epic story mode that takes place as well. In the game, Arena is going to be a similar game that is consistent of um, miniature tactical tile placement style. So you can have a big tile uh, map as well as different boards you can put up to get to depending on uh, what you're playing as, as well as you're going to be able to set up for campaigns. And then you've got the basic board which is gonna have everything already on it. In the game you're gonna choose different characters and they're gonna have all, the, all their own unique decks as well as their own unique miniatures. And then you're going to set up for either PVP or doing a campaign. The campaign will tell you what to do in the campaign book and the basic rule book will tell you how to play the basic game along with the different PVP uh, style combat in the game. Now there's a ton of different characters along with a ton of different cards that each character gets as well as a whole host of different things such as heroic actions you get to choose from and a plethora of the campaign stuff which I'll go ahead and show you right now. So here we have Arena, the contest, and all the components that I could muster into a single frame. And as you can see, you're going to have a ton of different characters. We're going to go over everything from the far left hand all the way to the right hand. So we'll start over here. This is the setup for the, the board that's already pre-set up. As you can see, it already has fire and all that already on it. It's also going to have these unique little miniatures that'll be used for like chests and levers and all that good stuff. This is the base board for uh, when you're first playing the game, but you'll be able to set up your own board as well. These guys over here, all the different miniatures in the game, there's tons going to be tons more. This is just kind of like a little sampling of what you're going to be getting here and the style of what they're going to look like. Of course, none of this is really final. This is all a prototype. Over here are the character boards, and they all have their unique uh, cards that are going to come with them. Every single one of them is going to have four cards that are unique to the four skills each character has. Their health, as well as their base attack, defense, and movement, as well as the type of character they are, their abilities, and then down below here is a basically a passive ability that they get specifically that will have them do certain things. These the cards you're going to be using, which are basically the abilities though. These are all additional ca character cards as well, uh, character boards as well as character cards here. I've gone ahead and laid them out there so you can see them. Over here is the campaign tome, the quest guide, and the rule book. So if you're going to play the campaign, you're going to be using the campaign tome and then go to the quest guide whenever it tells you to do so. It's kind of like a story that attached with the rules. And then the rule book here tells you the basic, how to play the base game as well as the uh, PvP components and all that, and it's very, very, very detailed as to how it's supposed to be set up. It tells you everything you need to know, and it does it in a in a very simple, organized manner in which you're going to be playing like, okay, start with this, and then add this, and then add this, nice and easy. Uh, these are heroic actions you're going to be giving to each of the different players. You're going to give them two secret uh, heroic actions, and they'll be using those throughout the game, specifically PvP mode. They're going to be using that a lot. Uh, these are going to be the little, instead of using the miniatures, I have the option to use these instead. They're just basically these little standees that will include little standy tokens. Uh, over here are the bosses, as well as their additional bonus health here. They're going to have the player board here for the boss, as well as each boss has their own unique boss abilities here. that lets you do different things whenever you pull them. And they're going to be used for the campaign mode. Uh, this is a boss tile, which can be used instead of a boss, or when you get the miniature you'll be using something like this, a nice big miniature like that. That one looks really cool. Uh, also going to be using a D20 for most of your rolling. It's going to be what facilitates attacking. And and uh, then you're going to have stuff like this. This is your campaign cards here, which will tell you different things throughout the campaign. I won't ruin it for you because that's kind of fun to go through the campaign and draw the cards and read them. You've got level up cards, which will give you certain benefits, like maybe plus a single damage to a character, as well as artifact cards you'll be getting throughout the campaign and scrolls. You're going to have boss spells that will do different things that the boss is going to be facilitating and which target it's going to be hitting. This one says remove all permanent effects and attack the nearest hero with the lowest defense. So that's how the boss kind of works. You've got fate cards as well that you'll be drawing that will occur whenever you go in certain spaces in the campaign mode. And there's little numbers in the bottom right hand corner of them that will facilitate what is going to be happening when you do land on those spots. These are all additional stuff that is going to be letting you make your own uh, board as well as when you play the campaign mode, it will tell you in the book what you're going to be uh, setting up and how you're supposed to set up as well. Over here, you've got special uh, actions and it'll tell you if it's ready or if it's not ready. Basically, when you're going to use it, you'll remove it. And then when it comes back into play, it'll be ready to go again. Evil powers for the villains and you've got the villain deck as well as, well as all of the components as far as life trackers and uh, even ch these little things which are like doors like that you'll be adding for the campaign mode. 
Over here are condition boards, which will show you what you are going to be uh, either weakened by or um, benefited by. Blessed, protected, hastened, so on and so forth, and then slowed, vulnerable, weakened, as well as kind of a basic idea of the tiles and a hero's turn. And not only that, but you'll be getting a bunch of other stuff too, like these tiles here and these things here. You'll be using these that give you uh, benefits and negatives, as well as teleporting tiles and lava, so you can make your own make your own style board, right? Uh, finally, you're going to have a quick guide reference sheet, which is back here. I'll show you this really quick. And it's going to tell you all the things you need to know about reactions, your turn, so on and so forth. It's a nice, simple, uh, simplified rulebook version of the game, so you don't need to go back and check the rulebook every single time. But for the most part, that is going to be what's included in the entire higher game of Arena the contest. So those are all the components in the game Arena. Let's talk about how to set up a game. Now the first thing you want to do is do you want to do a campaign or do you want to do PvP? We'll talk about how to play PvP because that's going to be the basic, basic idea of how to play the game as far as turn by turn goes. I'll discuss the uh, campaign a little bit more in detail after we show a couple turns. But to begin you're going to be selecting either three or four characters. You guys get to decide. You're also going to set the board up and then you're going to be drafting heroes like this guy here. You're going to get one of each different type you can have the two of the same type going back and forth in a draft fashion as well as gaining their deck of cards everybody's going to have four cards to uh, be using throughout the game they're going to be playing against your opponents you're also going to get your miniatures that you need as well as their little health tiles because around the board is going to be a health tracker and you're going to start it on whatever base stat that health is and whenever it takes damage it'll go around until it has been killed you're also going to get any other aspects you're going to be needing as well as deciding whether you want to play with the regular board or making up your own board which has its own unique rules as far as how placement's going to work and all that kind of stuff. After the border is all set up, then you're going to be placing units down one at a time. Me first, you, me, first, me, me second, then you, so on and so forth until all of your characters have been placed down on the board. And then the player who plays first is going to go first and you're going to start the game. All right, well, that's basically how to play the game. Let me show you in a more extended walkthrough down here along with a couple turns of how it's going to work for the PvP version of the game. So I've went ahead and set up the game for a 3v3 uh, two-player variant of the game. So everybody has three characters that they've already went ahead and drafted. They've taken their character cards, all four of them, as well as the miniatures. These miniatures don't represent the actual characters, but I figured miniatures would be more fun than Sandy, so I've included them here. You're also going to make sure you have your special ready token, which will start on its ready side and begin on the first player that is going to start the turns off. So we'll just go ahead and put it on this guy over here. You're also going to make sure you get two heroic action cards per player, and uh, they don't. Get, nobody else gets to know what character uh, heroic actions you got. There's also a d20 you're going to be needing and the conditioner card that is going to tell you what the good conditions and bad conditions are. And there's probably going to be additional tokens that will show you the effects of characters that are going to be taking place throughout the game. Uh, the other player will do the exact same thing as well. Not only that, but you're also going to take your hit points and this guy has 60 and you're going to put him on 60 points and she's got 60 as well, so she'll go on 60 and he has got 55 and you'll put him on 55. Then you're going to do the same for the enemy player as well. 65, 60, oh, nope, 65 is up here. And then 60, and this one is 60 as well. So a lot of people on 60 here, it looks like. Once all the players got their health total up, this is the max health the character is going to have, and this is the track it's going to go down. If you're playing with the dragon in the campaign mode, it's kind of interesting because the dragon's going to have multiple amounts of health, so you're going to put these like little plus 70 chits on, and as the dragon takes health damage, you're going to remove one of these every time it gets to the dead zone until all the 70s have been removed. But for the basic PvP version of the game, just set it up just like this. If you want to play with scrolls, you're going to be taking the deck and separating it in half and giving it uh, to each player. They're going to choose 12 cards of those to make their own unique deck, discarding any additional cards they might have in the stack. And then after that, they're going to shuffle them up and deal out two for each of them, for each of their decks. So two of this, this player, and he'll also get two of his. And whenever one of their characters dies, they're going to get to draw another two, max of three cards total. And you can use them as though they uh, were a special ability. So they're going to be extra useful throughout the game, kind of gives it more variance. And the scrolls say stuff like this one here, usage after a, combat's prim uh, after a combatant's primary attack roll, one combatant effect, target must re-roll and keep the second result. Pretty simple how they all work. They're very, very self-explanatory. The artifact deck is going to be a draft in which you're going to be trying to get six power. Uh, and as you draft them, you're going to be passing them back and forth. If you ever get six power, you're going to stop and let your opponent draft the rest. And they tell you a little power level on the top left-hand corner 
of each of the little text areas here. And then you just see what it does. And you're going to equip them to each character, one per character, though. And then that is it for the artifacts and scrolls. Finally, the first player will go ahead and set up on half the board. Could be this half or this half from what I gather. But we're going to just, for sake of making it easier, this is going to be the half of this player and this is going to be half the other player. So he'll go ahead and set up first and he'll place it wherever he wants. So he'll place it there. This player will go ahead and place it here and so on and so forth. We'll just keep going back and forth until everybody has placed all their units down. Now let's look at the board here really quick. These are teleportation areas from one to the one spot to the next you can teleport. And then over here are the little uh, positions of power that are going to be a buff when you begin your turn there. These little areas here are fire. When you walk into them you take four damage and if you end your turn on them you take four damage. And then these are walls that cannot be uh, shot through and you have to move around them. Where, as far as movement's concerned, we'll talk about that a little bit. When you move around spaces you have to do this. You can't simply go across like that. Um, and when you walk across like something like that, you're going to actually be in fire and take the four damage. So you have to do this if you want to avoid that. However, uh, line of sight is pretty simple as well. If you can draw a straight line to a corner to a corner, you can hit that player. And you can't go over somebody else's space. And if you got an, uh, an ally next to you, you can simply walk past them. That's not a big deal. You just can't land your same space as you're an ally. So that's the basic idea. So now you got all your characters set up and you have an idea of the board and health, you know, all the trackers of health. And the first player is going to begin. And the first player is going to take these heroic action cards and add them to his hand. And each hand is going to be different depending on the turn. So the first turn will start with him, second, third, fourth, and fifth and sixth. And he's got his four actions, which are located here. It shows all of his attack and defense and stuff like that, as well as his little passive ability here. He will then choose one of his cards to play after he chooses to move or before he chooses to to move. So you're going to be able to move and attack. Uh, this player will go ahead and go one, two, three, four, and he'll stop there. And he'll simply choose a card. So if he wants to choose a card that doesn't have a gold, uh, gold, gold, uh, little symbol here, top, top symbol here, that's gold, then he can just use it as a normal attack. He can do as much as he wants. He can also choose to do a basic attack, which is simply going to do base damage of whatever it says uh, over here in the card. And then also it'll tell you the range and all that associated on all the different cards. This is a counter spell that can be used out of turn for this character specifically. Normally characters cannot do this, but this is a specific character that can. However, if he wants to use a gold ability, he has to use this special ready uh, ability. It has to be up, so uh, he'd have to turn it over. And that means the next time the next player, his next uh, character's turn, it would be face down. But then after that, it would come back up again and he could use it once again or choose not to. That's going to be good for using stuff like scrolls as well as these little red symbols cards here. He can also choose to use these heroic abilities, which you only get once per game. If he chooses to use these, it's also going to cost a special uh, ready card, or a special ready token in order to do so. If he doesn't have that, he can't. And these are going to be passed from hand to hand to hand, so he's always going to have these available. But if he just wanted to play something simple, like maybe he wanted to play a magic missile, he could do that. It says it's got eight squares with one enemy, so it has to be with, he has to be within eight squares, and you're just going to simply count the squares. And the benefit is ignore all the harmful of effects or conditions that would be on him, and then you're going to roll a die. So you'll take this 20-sided die, and you'll look at the defense of this character, and if you can get the defense or higher on this 20-sided die, you're going to hit him. So he's got a 7, so you're going to roll 7. That's going to work. Damage is 10 damage plus an effect. So we'll go ahead and take the damage first to look at the character right here, and move him 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, oh, 8, 9, 10. And, so, and then the effect says two other enemies within range take three additional damage, but no other enemies within range, so that's not going to work. But if there was an enemy, like maybe right here, he would also take three damage. And then you've got over here, it says if you miss, you're going to do residual damage. So if he would have actually missed this, gotten less than seven, this character would still take damage. So that's kind of cool as well. After this character uses ability, he'll go back to his hand. If he had used a golden ability, it would be discarded and he wouldn't be able to use it for the rest of the game, uh, along with these other guys. And then he simply passed his hand uh, two cards heroic actions over as well as a special ready depending if it was flipped or not to the next character and the next player would get to go and he would get to use his character to move around choose a card and simply attack after that, uh, then the next player, would, he, he would actually get to go with use his character and back and forth. Also note too that there's specific abilities on all these cards. This is a tactic that says um, it would hit a target that is adjacent to at least one of your other allies and it does four damage. Most of these passives will do four damage in some way and they all have their own unique aspects to them. Another thing to note too is when you're attacking somebody, let's say this guy, actually we'll use something more realistic with this guy. He goes into range to attack and then later on down the line he chooses to uh, 
uh, uh, run away and attack from range. Whenever you come into contact with another player and try to escape, you're going to get uh, counterattacked, and that's simply uh, one, one of the base attacks and does something else. But it's just just to let you know there's a there's a little counterattack that is involved. Also, if maybe you want, you can sidestep, which is you'll be able to move uh, simply one space to the side, avoiding the damage. But it's going to cost you your entire movement. Also, if the counterattack does succeed, he'll also be minus one on his movement, and he would take damage. But to avoid that, you can simply sidestep. So if he was right here and he had a movement of six, he can go one, two, three, and then he would have to sidestep or sidestep, and that would finish his movement. Uh, and that works for everybody as well. Another thing to note too is when you're ranged and you're shooting somebody, there can be another counterattack as well, or, uh, or if you have maybe two people that are on the same team that are next to each other fighting against somebody who is by himself, he's going to actually be uh, crowded, so uh, he'll get a negative debuff, and it tells you all the different negative debuffs and how they're affected, and that's more explained in the rules, but just so you have an idea that that does take place in the game as well. But you're going to keep going until the players run out of health. I'll go around the board and go here. Once that happens, they're dead, and you would just simply continue playing without them, taking turns back and forth the same way. It's just if you lost a character, you'd only be using two characters instead of all three. Uh, and suffice to say, you could also be using four characters, but this is just a basic idea of how to do it and like I said range will work in any way in any way as long as you can see them and it's connected even this over this fire however these walls are going to prevent combat but that's a basic idea of how you play the PvP it's a pretty simple stylized tactical game with a couple unique little benefits involving the special ability over here special ability cards and heroic action cards not to mention potential artifacts you can have on your characters and the scroll cards as well, well let's go ahead and go up top and talk a little bit more about the adventure mode and the campaign mode and how that's going to take place as well. So that's the basic PvP aspect of the game arena. Now there's a couple other things too, like there's critical strikes, and there's a bunch of different cards as to what the, what, what can happen. You can move up your opponent's characters, move them into fire, you can do uh, cleaving, you can do whirlwinding, all kinds of cool things. But let's talk about the campaign mode, because that's also very interesting. Now the campaign mode is going to come with two guides. It's going to come the quest guide and the campaign uh, booklet, which is going to be a story which is going to explain the game. And you're going to be going back and forth through those books. At certain periods in time you'll be going through these cards here that are all numbered and it'll ask you to read them and these quest cards basically are going to give you choices and you'll be timed on some of them. They'll have certain aspects of them or it'll be like do you want to save these people? Do you want to kill them? Do you want to run away from this specific thing or do you want to face it? Uh, all these different things. Maybe you want to get this quest or maybe you don't. Uh, so that is another aspect. It's almost like a legacy aspect as to making choices. There's going to be villains in the deck. Uh, a villain deck that is going to involve different quests. You're going to be using these villain guys here which I used already in the tutorial somewhere. Here we go, right, these guys here. And they're going to have a deck which will basically differentiate them between the rest of them, as well as an evil power deck in which villains are normally going to be just attacking the closest character, and then if there's a tie, the closest character with the lowest health, so on and so forth. But you'll be using these as well, and it'll tell you what it does, as well as a command for each of them. You'll be getting levels up as you uh, go throughout the campaign, and you'll get these bonuses. So you'll either get attack or HP, defense, and even single damage. Uh, and as well as fate cards, depending on the quest, you're going to be drawing these fate cards randomly, and that kind of gives the diversity, the, increases the diversity of the game because they have numbers on the bottom left-hand corner, and they'll be like, oh, you know, you know, draw one of the fate cards, see what happens. Oh, here's an event that now has occurred due to the fate cards. Also, bosses. There's two bosses specifically that we were in, uh, checking out in this game, uh, and they have a boss spell deck as well as the boss deck similar to the player decks. They each have their own unique deck of cards. You've got this guy here, Raymore the Red Dragon. There's also a Blue Dragon. Now, just like a character board, it's going to have all the basic spe specific stuff that's going to occur on it, as well as different phases that it explains in the campaign mode how it goes. But uh, the boss spell will occur, and then based on who it's going to be targeting, as well as what the power of that specific uh, boss is going to have that turn, you're then going to draw a card from the boss spell deck and do what it says. Eight squares, one enemy, 20 damage per hit per effect. Other enemies within three squares take 20 damage, and if it's a miss, target takes 15 residual damage. So these bosses are nasty. But yeah, it's a campaign mode. So you're going to be going through the game, making choices, reading the storyline, and it's got a good heavy amount of storyline in the game. And you'll be drawing the different cards. You can use the artifacts and the scrolls, as well as even using all the different types of characters. And it, it, it gives you that kind of cooperative 
nature in a game that would otherwise normally be a PvP game. But yeah, so those are your options. You can play it solo, you can play it cooperatively, and then you can play against each other in a PvP mode that not only has a board all set up for you, but also where you can make up your own board and set it up with other players. So as you can probably tell, this game is pretty uh, pretty cool. I'm already I'm already kind of like excited about it. But nevertheless, let me tell you what I think about it. All right, so Arena, what do I think of this game? Well, first of all, there's so much going on in this game, and yet it is so simple. I love that aspect of the game. The rules are very comprehensive, and if you really have a question, it's going to be there's going to be an answer there for you, which is nice. Each of the different bosses have their own unique damage and uh, cards and all this kind of crazy stuff and all of the characters have their own unique abilities. And there's a bunch of different things you can do. And then you have the ultimate abilities and then you have the semi-ultimate abilities and then the simple basic ones as well as an even basic attack. If you have no other options, maybe you've lost all of your spells because some of these characters make you actually lose your spells. So I have one specifically that I really like is the bandit guy, this guy right here. He's super cool and has full on artwork on the back here. And this guy is Gary on the Rogue. His special abilities are Master Stroke and Ma Memory Thief. He can remove special attacks or a primary attack from a player and then use it against them. How cool is that? Not only that, but you got the beautiful artwork in this game. This game has tons of artwork. It is, it's it's really good. Like, I, I think there's only maybe one or two other games that I have uh, seen that I really enjoy as much as this one. It's very fleshed out, very detailed. All the characters have their own uniqueness to them, and there's tons of really cool characters here with a bunch of different diversity, all the different characters. You got uh, females and males and orcs and goblins and trolls and... Uh, werewolves, demons, everything, and you want a, even a samurai here. And then, of course, all the backwork art, which is really cool. They didn't have to do that added just for the prototype alone. So you know the amount of love is put into this game to the point where when you get your actual copy, this is going to uh, be, be on there for sure, as well as even better. The miniatures are pretty cool, too. I've got the prototype miniatures, as you see, or as you saw, and they look great. These are like the resin models here, and they are a little flimsy, but that is because it is a prototype model, and I'm sure the uh, miniatures you'll be getting are going to be a little nicer than these. However, these look great. I love resin miniatures. They look wonderful, and they, they go along with the characters very well. The dragon here, this guy is super cool as well, and very detailed, and he comes with oh, oh, a bunch of different tons of stuff. And as well as the artifacts and the scrolls. Normally this game would be kind of a basic miniature combat game and there's nothing wrong with that. I like a lot of games like that. Like Encantress is kind of like that. It's a basic a tile, play, tile building miniature combat game where you go back and forth. But this one adds, adds more. This one has artifacts and scrolls and the artifacts give your characters unique powers. Not only do they already have all their own unique stuff as well as passives, but now you got that. Or being able to use scrolls that you've chosen throughout the game to either combat against your uh, forces of evil or your opponents who are basically all, also forces of evil. And the amount of characters, which is not even, they, they did not need all these characters. And there's just tons of them. They just kept adding and adding. The balance is there. I had All the characters seem to work really well together and they work better in certain scenarios. And you're going to feel that as you play the characters, whether it's your first game or your tenth game, you're going to get an idea, you're going to have a full idea of how the characters work. This guy needs to be up close. This guy has to be at range. This guy likes to work together with people. This guy does not like to work together with people, but he can't be too far away from his allies. They all have their own unique conjunction. Throwing on top of that, the added extra stuff of the campaign, which is a bunch of like the, all these different miniatures involving chess and, and stuff like that that's going to be occurring, and the choices you'll get to add in the game, which has that little bit of a legacy aspect, the villains that are all separated, and you can understand which ones are which, which is super nice. I like how they color-coded them. And then the board, which comes as two boards, right? And this one comes as, as a blank board, right? And this one, you can add stuff too. You can make your own board, whether you're doing PvP or whether you're doing one of the scenario events where you're going to be actually the book will tell you what to do. It comes with all the different positions of power, uh, and then you got also the different lava board pieces, so you can kind of make your own death trap of, of players. I'm sure certain you could also do PvP with more than two players. We only focused in PvP on the two-player variant of going back and forth, but there's no reason why you couldn't play with more players and going back and forth. It has that tactical miniatures feel. It has that epic campaign scenario. You can jump in and play one game. You can jump and play multiple games over different weekends. It's up to you. Now, what I could say negative about this game, and be hard-pressed to, but it is long, and there is quite a lot to it. Um, there's going to be different 
abilities you're going to be having to take care of and remember, and there's also a bunch of different uh, conditions that will uh, take effect on your characters, whether they're powered or toughened or hastened, all that kind of stuff, and you're going to make sure to need to remember what happens with those characters. There were a couple occasions where I did not remember, oh, this guy has this specific condition, or this guy doesn't have this, isn't able to do this specific thing. Um, the line of sight was pretty good, movement made sense, the game flowed very well. Overall though, this game is excellent. I really like tactical miniatures games, so that's coming from a person who really enjoys these kind of games. And the dice rolling is going to be just basically for combat, and there is that luck factor involved. But what makes that unique as well is even if you fail, you're still doing residual damage, which makes me feel good because, oh, I rolled a 1. No good. However, at least I still get to do something, which is nice. It doesn't just fizzle out. And not only on top of that, but you've got triggers that will let you do different things when you're near an opponent far away. All the characters have their own unique aspect. And you can do a crit roll on a 20 and do some extra damage as well. And counterattacks. It just, it's just so much added, but it's not too complex. So uh, if you like tactical miniature games, this is definitely going to be one that you should check out. If you like the uh, style of artwork, which I, I'm fascinated by, <laughs> there's not a lot of games that I've seen that are just this in this detailed, then you're definitely going to be interested in Arena, the contest. Hands down, this is going in my collection. I give it my full stamp of approval. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go ahead and check out our other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps, and we do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out Arena, the contest coming to Kickstarter soon, if not already on. Links in the description below. Also, go ahead and check out my website, unfilteredgamer.com. We get tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're doing stuff weekly, so do go ahead and check that out. I think we got um, a giveaway for Partition, all four of these guys, which is currently on Kickstarter, as well as Legendary Metal Coins Season 3, um, Kingdoms of Erden, a whole bunch of good stuff. Also, go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, The Giveaway Geek, and Ferdinand, the Cardboard Stacker. He uh, does a lot of great tutorials. Lastly, we have a giveaway coming up soon, if it's not already up, for Batman. If you like Batman, we're going to give, give that away. You can check out the site or at Everything Board Games. They have Batman that's going to be up there. So, great. All right, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I appreciate it and look forward to seeing you next time.